you know, I don't, I don't recall a time in my life that I wasn't immersed in books. I'm Ken Sanders. This is the Ammo Can Library. Real ammo cans from war surplus decades ago that I've been filling full of books, poetry, short stories, novels, from authors met along the trail, some in person, some dead authors from books, some living ones in here too, more and more dead ones every day. We're just gonna fish through these ammo cans as we float down the river of my mind and uh, see what we find. I've been very, very privileged to go along with all of these books that I've read and, and stuffed into these ammo cans. I normally take better care of my books than the ones in here, but these have seen a lot of white water and a lot of rapids and a hell of a lot of sand. Uh, darkness, too. Um, I've, I've also had the pleasure of meeting a lot of the authors. There's many, many authors I've met along the trail that have had huge influences on my life from our own Terry Tempest Williams to the late Edward Abbey to the late Charles Bowden and to the, to the still living and great Wendell Berry. Questionnaire by Wendell Berry. One, how much poison are you willing to eat for the success of the free market and global trade? Please name your preferred poisons. Two, for the sake of goodness, how much evil are you willing to do? Fill in the following blanks with the names of your favorite evils and acts of hatred. Three, what sacrifices are you prepared to make for culture and civilization? Please list the monuments, shrines, and works of art you would willingly destroy. Oh man, there's so many good ones. How do we choose? Well, <clears throat> you can't go wrong with poet laureates for the most part. Well, maybe on a national level, I've been, I guess there have been a few stinkers. We've been pretty lucky with the four or five Utah poet laureates. Uh, Ken Brewer, wonderful teacher, poet, mentor to so many. He taught so many young people how to write, but more importantly, he taught them how to write well. Why dogs stopped flying. Before humans, dogs flew everywhere. Their wings of silky fur wrapped hollow bones. Their tails wagged like rudders through wind. Their stomachs bare to the sullen earth. Out of sorrow for the first humans, stumbling, crawling, helpless, and cold, Dogs folded their great wings into paws, soft enough to walk beside us forever. Some years back, maybe 10 now, he uh, died a nine-month death of, from pancreatic cancer. It was a pretty tough way to go. But Ken, in his dying, he taught his family, his friends, all of us that knew him, fellow poets, he taught us not only how to die, but how to live while you were dying. Whale song. With all this flurry of surgery, all these MRIs and wires down my throat, I begin to realize my anatomy does not match most humans. My stomach is shaped like a J, a a fishhook without barbs. My spleen rhymes with baleen, floats out of space, unusually large and irregular. My veins run silent and deep and not where surgeons expect them. Witness the bruises below both collarbones. Lately, my stomach, my bile duct, my liver, my pancreas are annoyed. I hear gurgling, growling, roaring that suddenly I recognize as whale song. I compare my inner rumblings to an old tape I have. Whale song, no question, I am a whale. I love whales, love their songs. 
vibrating through their orchestral bodies out far into the ocean in, in all directions. So I sing to all of you, to all the whales, to all the many beings. Love, 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 deep and resonant forever. <laughs>